as we're working on more projects together and collaborating. And uh, this is a special Tuesday where it's a fifth Tuesday. So we've set it aside for us to be able to have time of connection, conversation, uh, discuss membership type collaboration type conversations to make sure that we can start working on not not just a few projects here and there but really take it to a whole nother level and so whether you're here live or we're you know watching the recording this will be a a good exercise in being able to get to know each other and collaborate more right so that's the whole goal of our time together i'm going to go ahead and share a slide deck here that'll just help keep me on track more than anything and that, that way we can rock and roll that way. Good, good, good. I think it's worth noting too that some people on this today will have seen some of this before. Um, and this is a, we've, we've got some exciting new things coming up and, and some changes even internally that we're just trying to keep everybody apprised on. So uh, if, as we go, if anything, need some clarification or whatnot, pop it in the chat. I'll, I'll try to answer things as we go. Cool, cool. Thank you, Corey. Really appreciate your organization and your attention to detail. It's really uh, meant a lot to uh, a lot of the team members. So really appreciate that. Well, good. Well, welcome everyone. We're going to dive into basically a membership guidelines and conversation starter type of uh, presentation. You know who I am, Timothy Morgan, founder of Giver Marketing, Corey, uh, team builder, branding extraordinaire, and just really uh, functioning quite a bit on the operations side right now, just to kind of help everybody. And we're, we're really thankful for that. Uh, the Tuesday masterclasses that many of us have been able to pop into uh, over uh, either, either the last several months or some other, um, even previously, um, are happening on Tuesdays. Uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time, and um, today is a fifth Tuesday, like we mentioned. So, at the uh, at the core of what we're talking about is really membership guidelines, and then the other master classes are listed there. If you want to kind of track along over the next several re weeks and months, and even beyond, so we're glad to be able to make those available every single Tuesday. Uh, we often cover. Um, pieces and parts of the Giver Marketing Blueprint, but the first Tuesday of every month, as you know, is the Giver Marketing Blueprint. It's the core signature process that uh, when we work on a project together, the, the clients, the, the associates, the power partners, whoever we're working with, will have seen uh, at least the Giver Marketing Blueprint um, in its entirety. So there's at, at least a a conversation and a training point and a walkthrough of the Giver Marketing Blueprint. So just to be familiar with that helps us in serving those clients. And that's uh, an important piece to the conversation as, as almost a starting point. Um, so today we're going to talk about core principles, training, guidelines. Corey, uh, we've been working on this so much together. If you want to jump in, pop in with comments, thoughts, or feedback, uh, as we have conversations or even ask questions to some of the team members that you've been touching base with, uh, just let's, let's just wrap this together. That'll be fun. Okay. Why a network? So as everyone on the training today understands, there's just a power in being a part of a tribe, uh, especially of trusted people. Um, there's a learning component. Uh, you can offer more services if you have some trusted uh, sidekicks and partners and uh, vendors and others that you would you would recommend, right? And so ultimately what it does is it helps us grow revenue. Each one of us can um, basically be a part of a, like a virtual networking group for marketing specialists. And not only do we have this collective brain power and uh, ability to offer more services, but the tools and the resources that are available just because we're all practitioners uh, becomes pretty powerful. <laughs> so we're super excited about how the collective is beginning to uh, share information, share genius. And the beauty of this is if you're part of a network that's trusted, 
you don't necessarily have to hire more employees than you absolutely need to. And so at that point, you become working, you, you become a collective of people that we can lean on and help each other. Imagine walking into a client's office saying, yeah, I work with a team of, of several dozen marketing specialists. I happen to be great at this and I want to help you with this and I can coordinate this, but we also have others who can come on as needed. So that, that positioning allows you to charge uh, accordingly and also lean in on others when even you're just feeling a little bit out of your element, uh, you can definitely uh, gain some help from others. Our core principles, our core guidelines, our core values are pretty evident, but it's important for, for, for me and others who have been working uh, with the team for uh, a long time now to make sure that we have this um, non-negotiable approach, <laughs> if you want to put it that way, to how we work with clients and with each other, okay? So we want to be generous. We want to produce results. We want to have efficiency, uh, a great attitude, and a level of transparency that is appropriate. Um, when it comes to generosity, we just give massive value with appropriate boundaries. So it's important to note that generosity is... It, this isn't random acts of kindness, okay? It's in, intentional acts of generosity and giving in a way that would add massive value. And it's um, I, I think it's really important to note that there's some people that kind of just give wherever they go and whatever they do. And sometimes it's important to step back and say, okay, why am I doing this? I'm giving my time, talent, resources of all different kinds to this cause or to this person or to this company or whatever it is and it's important to step back and say okay we want to give but we want to give with appropriate boundaries and intentions okay so that's an important piece especially when you're working with each other you don't want to just be the giver and not have any kind of reciprocation we always want to have a, a level of sustainability okay um, results hey let's over deliver and measure that activity and then make positive ad adjustments as we go along. But it's important that we measure, right? Um, even when it comes to like SMART goals, measuring is a part of just putting goals together with your clients. And um, at the end of the day, if clients don't see measured results, they're probably going to pull back anyway. So you might as well just start with that, okay? So go with, lead with those results and kind of that guidance that goes along with that. Efficiency, hey, um, Corey and myself and others and Vicky, others, we, we've, we've tried to bring some um, tools and resources, of, and we'll talk about those in a minute, that allow for a whole nother level of efficiency. I mean, something as simple as what we're gonna talk about later, like a scheduler, for example, um, could be extraordinarily powerful for you and your business. Um, but we wanna organize, prioritize, and then use the systems and automation that are available to us uh, really for free or low cost or a reasonable cost to be able to basically jump to another level of efficiency. If you could clone yourself, would you do it? Is really a good question. And um, at the end of the day, some automation, if you put it in a kind of a suite, um, you can basically do that uh, on some levels, okay? Attitude, hey, let's be authentic, but stay positive with our attitude while looking for solutions. So we want to have that kind of that, I don't, I don't know if cheerful is the right word, Corey. I don't know if you have some thoughts on that or, or, or Debbie or others who have kind of this, this natural tendency towards optimism, right? But we want to definitely stay optimistic, but with a, an authentic version of it. <laughs> so we're not being fake, right? So we want to make sure that that is, um, always present, a good attitude, right? And it, some of this goes without saying, but you'd be surprised. I run into people that didn't really make the cut because they're real, I mean, we all have, like on our teams, they just didn't make the cut because for some reason there was a, you might call it a character flaw, but sometimes it's really just the way people have done things. They just don't know any different. So we wanna be transparent. We wanna measure and communicate, but don't hide what's important to each other to our 
uh, clients, team members, especially when we're collaborating on a project, it's so easy to throw somebody else under the bus when at the end of the day, if we just have high levels of communication, we're measuring everything and we don't really hide what's important to the project, then um, usually it works out pretty good. And then those expectations um, are very clear as well, okay? Any questions about the core values before we jump, jump ahead? from anybody, I, I wanna just wrap uh, kind of verbally as well here. I see a lot of chat in the chat, or in the chat box and there'll be folks dropping comments and thoughts on uh, Facebook as well. But um, any questions about the core values or those core principles? All right, good. I'm just looking through the chat box a little bit here while we're pausing for a second. Good, good, good. Everybody's loving on each other in the chat box. Good. No questions, no questions. Good. Yeah, one of the reasons that we're here together today is because we have some of these already rolling and we just want to be reminded of them, right? So all things being equal, we do business with people we know, like, and trust. We've seen this quote many, 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 many times before, um, but we would also want to add that we pay more to people we respect. And so there's a power in our network and that we can bring kind of a level of professionalism as well. Coaching is the privilege of drawing out potential within a person or a team. Um, there are going to be some that are going to have a natural tendency toward coaching and consulting. And then there are going to be others that are just like, hey, keep, keep me behind the scenes. I just want to execute. I want to get great work done. I want to be more of a specialist. And that's absolutely fine. Just important to note, that we lead with an element of coaching so that the experience for the client and the uh, service providers can, can be so much better because there's a guide in the process, right? So coaching is focused on strengths and improving, whereas a typical marketing agency might have more of a tendency to go into the consulting, which looks for the weaknesses and ways to solve a problem or a pain. All right, so think about it in this way. We do both. We do have moments and times and, and situations where coaching leads into consulting or consulting kind of backfills into coaching experience, but it's important to note there is a slight difference and that difference is coaching uh, focuses more like on the desires and consulting focuses generally tends to focus on more like the pains or, or, or the, the fears of, of a client or, or, or someone that we're working with, okay? So we lead with the coaching, really go into like, what are we gonna do to accomplish more inspirational, more uh, results oriented in, in that we're trying to accomplish a particular goal. Consulting oftentimes has this like, let's solve the problem uh, kind of a, a vibe to it, which happens in our organization, but it's not what we lead with generally, okay? Any questions about consulting versus coaching? I'm gonna move pretty quickly because I wanna um, just open it up for dialogue and get to know you and just connection time, okay? So that'll be good. All right. We are the most trusted network of marketing specialists on the planet. If you kind of Google Giver Marketing, the Giver Marketing Network, uh, and kind of some of the work that, that, that I've been doing, other team members have been doing, you'll notice that there's a consistent high ranking or high reviews all across uh, the internet and beyond um, that allows for us to kind of claim that special network of marketing uh, professionals who are working together. Vision, a world of generous movements people actually know about. <laughs> How many know about some great causes and companies that they're just the best kept secret in town. <laughs> we, we, wanna, we wanna eliminate that, <laughs> that problem. We wanna make sure that people are well known, that we, we can highlight them. And, and our vision is to see a world with more of those kind of movements, causes, companies with great leadership uh, develop into something that is really quite frankly, we'd love to see a bunch of household names come out of our efforts. So that'd be good. Our mission specifically is to bring positive attention to those causes and companies. The ones doing good in the world deserve positive attention. It, it helps keep our, keep our world moving 
in the way that we would like to see it move. And it, it makes it more fun too, especially when there's a lot of craziness that happens in, in, you know, in, a, in our country and, and beyond and, and wherever we're working, if there's some craziness going on in the world, we want to kind of bring the light to the forefront, right? All right. So leading with coaching. So how does that look? What does that look like to a client or a customer or somebody that we're working with, a power partner even? Well, we showcase the, the blueprint. We offer done for you services, and then we give them massive results. It's, it's a pretty straightforward uh, approach, but many small and, and even medium-sized organizations have difficulty um, taking the time to walk through a strategy that is uh, really at its core, it's very simple, but it, it requires a little bit of forethought in order to execute properly. When you, when you and I come across a client or a power partner or team member that is grasping for straws and I, I just want more leads, I just want more leads, that is not necessarily going to be the best place to start. Now, will we generate leads, conversations, appointments, and, and com uh, communication with the audience? Yes, but generally there needs to be some kind of strategy behind that. And that's where we have to at least start with the, the giver marketing blueprint to, to get going or some, some version of that blueprint to make sure that we're going down a track, right? So we want to offer that as a starting point. All right. So that coaching piece is super fun. So when we're marketing or coaching or um, experimenting with any kind of high level communication for a company, we want to have clarity, creativity, and consistency. And a lot of folks find this itself to be almost like a mindset uh, roadmap for us to really walk through with a leader on what is their strengths and weaknesses and how can we best help and leverage their strengths. Like if they're super creative, then we want to just move with that creativity and then try to kind of backfill some of the other ones and or ask them to consider um, improving some of the other areas along the way, but really want to lead with their strength and make sure and, and drive with those. Okay. There's a balance that comes, but, but we really want to focus on those. Hey, suggested tools for efficiency. We've talked about this in the past in, uh, in a few weeks, we're going to be talking about more tools than this, but at the very least get familiar with Trello because we're going to be sharing a lot of projects on, Trello to start with. There's other project management boards that we, we've all experimented with, even some of the team members here uh, today um, and wh whoever's listening, we've experimented with different, you know, like Asana. There's, I mean, there's, there's so many, I don't even want to go and mention a lot of them, but Trello is, is pretty simple and easy to use even from a mobile device. So we find that to be a good starting point. Zoom, of course, we're on Zoom today. Um, if you haven't experimented with Zoom and even the recording features and some of those things, uh, I re highly recommend recording videos of you just sharing your genius and joining in on some of these master classes and those kind of things to let people know who you are and your personality and what you have to bring to the table. Calendly is a ske time saving scheduler. Uh, we have an actual um, agreement with uh, another company that allows us to have a a deep uh, discount and some uh, additional training around another scheduler as well. But Calendly is free for one event. It's easy to start with. It integrates into your calendar. So uh, we recommend at least starting with Calendly. IFTTT, look it up. And Zapier, of course, are great automation tools. And you might get intimidated a little bit like, okay, Automation, that kind of scares me. Like, I don't know what's going to go wrong. Well, just talk to Corey. He, he has a tendency to really enjoy doing that. There's another gentleman named Tom. Uh, Wes Lemos will help a little bit with that if, if, if you ever need it, <clears throat> just as a, as a kind of a uh, helping you out a little bit. But look, look just experiment with it. <clears throat> Use some of these tools in a way that would allow you to leverage your time, okay? I, uh, we can go into all the details of this in a few weeks, but uh, try Evernote, try Otter and start um, taking notes digitally and recording things um, in, a in a way that can be transcribed so you can turn them into blogs and different things like this. 
These are the tools that are free to use, but they can bolster your company and your collaboration to a whole nother level. I mean, it, it, they're game changing uh, tools. There's reasons why millions and millions and millions of people use these tools. Okay. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Alignable, the list goes on. But here's the thing. If you're in the B2B space, um, you need to consider LinkedIn and Alignable. But if nothing else, just find at least two platforms that you want to dominate. For me, it's it started with link, uh, Facebook. Uh, then it moved to LinkedIn. And and then I've also experimented a little bit with some some other platforms and um, that includes Alignable and, and, and others, but we want to dominate two to start with so we don't feel overwhelmed. Whatever we're posting and whatever conversations we're having on one platform, we might as well pop it onto one or two other platforms, right? And if you want more questions, uh, uh, talk more about that, you can always join in our social media best practices training in a few weeks as well. And by the way, all those master classes are a part of your membership. So, and we'll talk about that in a second, but look, uh, at the end of the day, you're a specialist. I'm a specialist. We're all specialists. We're all really great at one thing. Um, maybe there's a secondary thing that we're good at as well, but, but we want to make sure and focus in on what we're great at so we can go to market and collaborate with other team members as a specialist, not a generalist who maybe has a basic knowledge of a lot of things, but really want to become known as someone who's an expert in, in, in one thing, maybe a second thing um, related to it. But uh, if you have high detailed knowledge and experience of one particular subject, then we want to showcase that. In fact, if you're, if, if you're able to, uh, either in the comments or the chat box, give me two words that describe what you're, what you're great at in your company? What is, what are the two words that would describe you as a specialist? You know, uh, I do this, uh, I'm a marketing coach, or I'm a social media person, or what, give me, give me like two or three words that describe exactly what you do. That's your genius to the market so that people in our conversation, even now understand what you're really great at. And sometimes it's hard because we get to know people and we know they're multi-talented and they have depth, but what is it? What's the tip of their spear? What's really their genius? And that, that I think is the power in, in how we're approaching working together. Uh, you have an opportunity to become a, a, a thought leader in your area of expertise. If you focus, focus, focus in on what you're great at and your specialty. There's a reason why we take personality tests, strength finder tests this, that helps you kind of hone in how and what you're really great at. You have more stability in your career, in your company, if you're able to focus on that. Um, and we also have opportunities to obviously grow and develop into something that is uh, maybe a, would be considered more of a pivot. So a lot of times what will happen is somebody will will begin uh, really focusing in on one thing, becoming great at that. And then they realize, I love doing this, but what I really like to do is coach on a broader spectrum of marketing topics and strategies and different things, but I'm still really good at this one thing. So then you would have to make a choice at that point. Do I pivot to become basically a specialist at coaching? Or do I stay a done for you specialist who just executes, executes at a high level and continues to make more and more and more becoming the genius at that one particular done for you service. Now there's probably going to be some questions about specialists versus co you know, coaching and what does that mean? But I would, I would highly recommend um, preparing those questions because it's going to be a super fun conversation. All right. Tools for coaches. If you happen to be one of those people that have developed into someone who really wants to become a specialist at coaching, right? They want to they want to kind of have a broad understanding, but they want to hone the craft of guiding clients and even team members through a process. 
Um, we have some tools for you. They're found on the website and they're found in uh, different places. We can get them to you if you need them. But the actual recording of the Giver Marketing Blueprint is on the website under tools. You can also find uh, like a 20 question kickstart marketing review, uh, seven marketing moments, which is a follow up and nurturing system. Uh, so look, people charge, companies charge hundreds and hundreds, even if not thousands of dollars for these type of tools, but we're just going to make them available to you so you can use them on your own business, uh, maybe introduce them to uh, clients and projects that you're working on together. Visibility scan, want to thank Vicki for bringing the visibility scan to the table. Very, very, that was basically her ticket to the network, I mean, it was just a really genius idea on her end to be able to bring that visibility scan because it's helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of team members and clients and prospects and others that we've been working with. And goodness gracious, uh, it's just a great tool that um, you can find other places that, but they're always wanting to charge you <laughs> and a, uh, a bunch of money to, uh, run the, the scan and then get into one of their large programs and on go all this other look we just keep it really simple run the scan and if you want some help from Vicky she'll help you <laughs> we'll just keep it keep it at that but ask Vicky if you have any questions about that she'll she'll chime in in the chat box all right so uh, five people quiz we have various forms of personality quizzes that we love to give but right now we have something that we call the five people quiz, which basically just helps us understand a little bit how to match you with clients. A lot of our clients actually take a, a similar type of uh, quiz or have some kind of personality tendency. And so we match them up uh, based on some personality, uh, just strengths and basically love to uh, match up the right uh, driver with the right passenger, if you want to put it that way. Okay. The client journey. Okay, so let's get into this a little bit. But before I do, is there any questions, Corey? Anything coming through the chat box? Anything uh, coming coming from anybody? That's uh, just train? conversation that I'm engaging with. So yeah, keep on rolling. All right, man. I'm gonna rock and roll, and then we're gonna we're gonna get into some some roundtable discussion. It'll be super fun. All right. So for sake of time, let's just make this simple. A client journey is gonna usually start with a 10 minute discovery call. When I when somebody first told me that 10 minute discovery call was gonna be the key to unlocking more conversations, I, I didn't think it was gonna work. Uh, I, I paid this gentleman good money to coach me in my business personally and found that this was probably the biggest takeaway or one of them, okay? The 10 minute discovery call helps prevent us from having the 45 minute conversation with somebody who a may not even want that B don't it may not be a great fit for us right now. We just need to make an uh, initial conversation. So we start with 10 minute phone call. And then if it goes well, maybe we go into a, a zoom chat of some kind as a secondary uh, conversation. But then eventually we, we want to move that conversation into some kind of, master class or group experience of some kind. We obviously offer the master classes on Tuesdays, but look, we want to get people into the room where we're kind of the expert and we're kind of a, a part of a tribe or a group or something. Um, if you have a, a networking group that you belong to and you want to invite some people to your local networking group, that's great too. But our master classes are every Tuesday. So it's a good place to consider and we always try to bring potential prospects and clients in and even team member, you know, other team members into the master class so they can experience our collective genius together as we're having conversations and training and doing different things. Ongoing subscription is our model. So we're going to always present an option for an ongoing commitment or subscription of some kind. Okay. Now we don't have contracts, not, not, not any real paperwork. Uh, you can pause any time. I have people sometimes they'll ask me, hey, can you send me like a full, you know, a full proposal with a contract and this and that. And I'm like, well, why don't we just try it for a month based on the the outline I just gave you in that email you know, yesterday. And let's just let's just try it. There's no contract. So you can pause any time. 
if, if we take that approach with our clients and power partners and who, whoever we're collaborating with, we're going to save a lot of time throwing out proposals where people are just kind of like, uh, I don't know. Sometimes it's analysis by uh, paralysis by analysis, or there's too much information. Sometimes you just want to give them the basics and get started, show them the results. And if they don't like the personality or the style by which you work, then, then we pause. It's not a big deal. And it also prevents um, that feeling of like you're, you know, you're jumping into a marriage too quickly. Really, we want to just start slowly and build rapport along the way. So that's kind of the approach that we've taken by, um, by being paperless and subscription based. All right. So what's the focus of a discovery call? Well, that almighty 10 minute phone call that we talk about quite often, it comes down to asking really good questions and, and listening well with a, a, an intentionality around reiterating what you're hearing. So my wife always says, hey, um, you're doing better at active listening. And I'm thinking to myself, well, yeah, because I'm practicing it all the time on these 10-minute phone calls. I'm just learning how to uh, listen and reiterate what I'm hearing. And if, if, if there's one skill you can have on the phone, it's listening and reiterating um, uh, outside of those you know, really great questions that you're asking, OK? Give next steps for massive value and ex uh, some kind of value exchange. Um, next step could be going into a Zoom chat for a mini session where they uh, somebody pays a, a small amount just to experience like almost like an appetizer of what you do. Um, next step could be, hey, I'm gonna help you um, craft your first email. And all I ask in return is that you uh, you know, pay a small fee or, or generate five referrals or something. So where there's a, a small step toward working together long term. Okay. So ask really good questions, listen, and then give those next steps. All right. So the actual 10 minute call that we train on and that we um, recommend as, as we're welcoming more prospects and clients is something we call the VR12. Now listen, conversations can be pretty boring without a, some kind of story or background, okay? So we recommend starting every conversation with a version of uh, either your story or asking your prospect maybe a little bit about their story, ask them a little bit about their background, how they got to where they are now. Just get a little bit of context. Now you can read some of this on LinkedIn and Facebook and some other places to kind of do some research. But A, sometimes you don't have a lot of time to do a, a bunch of research. Even if you have, it's nice to hear it verbally. Like, what is the real story? What's Sometimes I'll even say it this way. What's the story behind the story? How did you get to where you are now? And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, that's worth writing down because that question right there just opens up the, the beginning of a trust building connection, emotionally connecting uh, experience. So, and, and, and by the way, this is not sales training. All we're doing is learning how to connect with people. You could call it, um, you know, conversation training, but it's, we're not asking for a sale at this point. We don't even know if it's a good fit. This is not a sales driven you know, this is not an always be selling, selling situation. We're not trying to close a deal here. We're, we're just asking for their story. Because if we can't connect and align our story with theirs, and uh, uh, Kyle and Corey and others in, on the team have been really digging deep into the story brand. And if you don't know your story and you don't know their story, you're not going to know how to align the story brand properly into what they're doing. So you need to swap stories, basically. Then you go into, hey, what's your vision? What are your roadblocks? 12-month goals? Just get an idea of where their heart and mind is. Like, get an idea of their long-term vision, the roadblocks that are preventing them from reaching that vision, and then the 12-month goals so we can start working on something together. If you can do that in 10 minutes, 12 minutes, maybe even 15 minutes if the conversation is going well, goodness gracious, ladies and gentlemen, that phone call, that marketing phone call, that 
discovery call, the exploration call, whatever you want to call, uh, get to know you call can lead into some amazing things. And what you're looking for is a client who is hungry, coachable, and passionate. Um, may not agree with everything Dave Ramsey says, but he, he often says, work with people who are hungry and humble. If you can find an element of humility in the story and the answers to those questions, and they're hungry to grow, they're coachable, they're passionate, then you have, my friend, have a real prospect on your hands of someone who you can bring value to, and then they can obviously commit to some level because they have an element of passion, they have fuel in the tank, and they're ready to go. So we're screening these prospects basically for our team members to be able to work together on projects. That's essentially what the responsibility of coaches and, and others in, in, the, in the network, the done-for-you service providers, we're always having these like interviews with prospects to see if they're a good fit. And if they're not a great fit for us, maybe we'd send them over to somebody else. And we'll talk about referral ping pong in a second. That'll be fun. All right, membership steps. You're probably wondering, okay, I've already gone through some of the membership steps or I'm already a member or I'm curious about becoming a member. Either way, here, let's just make it really clear. There's usually some kind of 10 minute phone call to find out if there's even a good fit to work within this trusted tribe, okay? And not everybody makes it. I, between all of us, we've all had conversations with potential team members, myself included. I've had conversations with probably over a thousand candidates and we currently have several dozen who are in the network and um, a, por a portion of those are very active. So you can tell that this is a very selective tribe, okay? So if you attend all four master classes and then you, you kind of dig into the blueprint and do your homework, at that point, you're basically in kind of a graduation process or a welcoming process to be able to start working on projects, all right? So then we would have a welcome Zoom chat to go into more details, maybe even revisit this, a little bit of this slide deck. Then, then we'd start pr participating in a project together immediately. And we do just about whatever it takes to get you going on one project because we wanna see how you work. We wanna see if you pay attention to dates, details, deadlines, and how the delegation process is going and the project tracking and the Trello board. We wanna see your working style before we start recommending you to dozens and dozens of other projects, okay? Which over time can grow as the trust is built, right? We're always earning our place at the table. Any questions about membership steps? thing I'd say about that too is, um, you know, we don't, we don't have people work on a client project right away. We usually start with something internal to be able to test that out because just in case, you know, something, something doesn't work out or, you know, the person we're working with decides it's not the right fit for them after getting into it or, or, you know, we feel that way. It, it's less pressure on everybody involved <laughs> uh, by working on an internal project first. So love it. A great point, and and I would say when when we're working with each other as well, Corey, um, team members working with team members because immediately as you join the team, you have access to be able to work with other marketing professionals. And if you find some buddies within the network that you really enjoy working with, I would say do a similar kind of thing. Like make sure there's a small step before you go into some large project together because we want to keep the friendships going and the and the communication going and the goodwill going quite what you know at a high level so that'll be good thank you corey good good call start small start internal start with a small something that you need help with personally look we're all marketing professionals but doesn't mean we know everything so we could definitely lean on each other and ask each other to help with just our own internal projects right that's actually one of the biggest benefits of the network all right, included benefits and resources. Speaking of benefits, members, online Facebook group. Um, the We have a members only Facebook group that's developing right now. You'll start to see invites to uh, not just the private Facebook group that we make available for those who are doing homework and different things like this, but a members only group. Instead of doing the, uh, let's just put it this way, our Facebook um, messaging group, 
conversations that we've been having get, been getting so big. We're basically having to start a members only <laughs> Facebook group. So it's a, it's a separate group just for the active members and just for those who are wanting to um, connect more, okay? Uh, private 30 minute sessions with uh, myself or Corey or other active team members who have really shown, showcased some genius and be, been able to help uh, quite a few others. We wanna make sure and make those 30 minute sessions available. Uh, the whole idea here is collective wisdom and, and intentionality and genius, okay? It's not one, it's not one person who has uh, all the answers. It's, it's usually a collective a team effort, right? Other team members for collaboration, of course, we've talked quite a bit about that. Discounted services from team members, and that includes some of the software. I'll show you that in a minute. G Suite and Bonusly accounts, which we pay for as a network to make sure that you can get paid, you can communicate, you can have all that available. Uh, and that's that's for active team members. So once they've kind of hit a certain threshold and we're working on a paid project, then they instantly have availability uh, for that. And then they can get, that, get paid that way as well. Marketing project consideration, obviously, from each other and um, also from the network itself. We're starting to become known kind of in in certain regions of the United States and other, other places are starting to catch wind of our network. And um, quite frankly, some people are trying to, how should I put it nicely? Um, some people have hinted at the fact that they're joining the network just because the team is so talented <laughs> and that's it. Like, I, so we have to be very careful that the, whoever joins the network has this kind of uh, core values and core principles that we talked about before. Okay, we're not we're not welcoming takers when our the name of our network is Giver Marketing Network, right? Like we want to welcome givers and those who want to help. They're in it to win it for each other, that kind of thing. Okay, that includes the projects that we work on. So to join the team, it's a five hundred dollar a month commitment. It's an investment into your company. It's the availability for all the benefits. And if you want to learn more about that, you can go to givermarketing.com slash membership. If you want to share that with others, you're welcome to do that. We will always, always bless you and help you and give you a little bonuses, uh, not little bonuses, actually quite a bit uh, significant bonuses if you welcome other team members. And we want to encourage you to do that. Uh, we, we do a lot of profit sharing around here. So you'll, you'll just know that as you welcome others and, and as you get more involved, you'll see a lot of um, goodwill coming your direction and, and a lot of benefits coming your direction in the form of projects and other things as well, okay? Um, the giver marketing points can be earned and used to pay others. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but I just wanted to mention that in connection with the actual um, commitment and investment level that's needed for membership, okay? Some of the benefits include a deep discount on the software that not only we use internally, and Corey, you and I can both kind of speak to some of these uh, software programs that are available. Uh, we've invested quite a bit between uh, me and Corey and Wes Lemos and others that, that are key part of kind of a suite of software services available um, we've, we've invested enough to make a significant impact on our own conversation, uh, generation and client acquisition. And so we not only offer these software, the suite of software available to you, but we use this software internally. So we know exactly what to do in order to set these up properly. There's no guessing game. We go right in, help you set it up get it all dialed in. And at the end of the day, you get a deep discount on what is more like the retail pricing to our clients. Okay. So if you have any questions about any of these services, please let us know. You can get a scheduler. You can get your visibility software with training from Vicky. You can get social posting software available from Corey and others who, who are really able to help make sure and monitor and train and get those uh, social media posts going to multiple platforms. I'm not pitching this as much as I'm letting you know that we use it. And it's 
deep discount for you because you're a member. That's that's the main main push. Okay, um, Wes and his team have created a software in-house here that allows for LinkedIn messaging. Uh, we have some other uh, software also around Facebook too, but really LinkedIn because you're in the B2B space is where you want to play anyway. Um, when it comes to generating messaging and appointments, and there's a reason uh, there's a reason that we went from 500 appointments to 1,000 appointments, on track for 1,000 appointments this year. Um, and it's because of some of this software, okay? We've just basically taken our, our, our uh, efficiency to a whole nother level, okay? Any questions about the software that's available? I know, Corey, you could probably speak to, to some of this too, but, but uh, any questions that are popping through as we're kind of wrapping up here? Nothing about this. There's a couple other random questions I've been answering. Cool. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the included software that's no additional cost that I mentioned before for getting paid is called Bonusly. Currently at the time of this recording, we are using a software called Bonusly. It's the best fit for how we operate as a network because we don't have employees and we don't uh, treat each other like uh, necessarily like subcontractors. We're more like power partners that are rowing together and working together as team members in collaboration on projects. So it's a very different vibe. So we had to find us the right fit. And this is the only one that we could find to this point that allows you to um, receive points that you can cash out through PayPal anytime. So you receive your payments, um, you get um, kind of noticed or um, um, appreciated for the projects that you're working on. So it's kind of this uh, re rewards and appreciation platform. It has um, some really fun uh, gift cards you can purchase inter internally. If you earn enough points, you can end up paying other team members for services they can provide for you. So you can basically earn your way into leveraging uh, this platform to build your business as a freelancer, a sole proprietor, or even a company who wants to go into another level as a marketing agency, okay? So in a way, you've developed a, a network here and a way to get paid and pay others that is very, very fun to use, okay? Um, nothing like getting rewarded and then everybody being able to see it. So look, we're super transparent around here. So people are gonna see what we're getting paid for and what we're doing. And there's gonna be little tags and different things. So we know what projects we're working on. There's, there's nothing hidden here. Like everybody kind of gets paid what they're, they ask to get paid and we profit share and we make sure that everybody's happy so that ultimately the client is served very well, okay? All right, any questions before we go into one of my favorite little things, my strategies that are helping my, friends, power partners, team members, and, and others uh, when it comes to referrals. Any questions before we get into referrals? Any questions about the network itself? Good, okay, I'm gonna keep moving. I'm assuming, Corey, that you're answering a lot of those questions uh, on, the, on the chat box and, and maybe even in the comments. All right, so listen, the lifeblood of any business, whether it's, we were training a, a, a team within a $30 billion company a few months ago. And whether it's a $30 billion company or it's a startup, okay? It, referrals are the lifeblood of any company. By the way, just a little side note. If somebody comes to you as a marketing professional, because most of us here are marketing specialists, okay? Mark, as a marketing professional, if somebody comes to you and says, Oh, I don't need marketing. My company's based on referrals. Give me a yes on the chat box if you've ever heard that phrase. I don't need more marketing. My company's based on referrals. Yeah, chat box is lighting up. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. We've all heard that phrase. I don't need marketing, blah, blah, blah. It referral. Um, um, it's all based on referrals or it's all word of mouth. All right, well, what is marketing? Marketing is communication. And marketing in and of itself is communication that helps you build trust. What are, what are referrals? Referrals are communication from a trusted third party to give you a recommendation or an introduction to cons be considered for some kind of project. 
So a referral by definition is marketing. So if you want to take your game, our game, our collective game to a whole nother level, consider something of a strategy around what every company uses anyway as a big part of their strategy, referral ping pong. Now, when I first started doing this with some of my selective, you know, just trusted friends and power partners and team members and others, I started realizing, wow, this is actually super simple. I'm, I might want to share this with the team, right? So Corey and I got together and started doing some of this and a few other team members started experimenting. Wes Lemos and I are killing it with some referral ping pong. Others, look, Vicky, uh, others are starting to say, okay, we should probably leverage the network for referrals. So here's what you do. You go to a team member, you ask them if they want to play referral ping pong. And, and they'll say, well, what's referral ping pong? You can do this with clients, prospects, anybody, okay? Power partners. But specifically internally within our network, I want to make sure that this is very clear, that this is an expected behavior, okay? You give a referral either on LinkedIn or Facebook. Try to do an introduction on one of the social media platforms, okay? And then within three days, that person needs to reciprocate with a referral the same way. And you can call it a light introduction or a light referral or an introduction, whatever. We call it re referral ping pong because we're introducing people that could be potential clients later on, okay? They may not need your service right this second, but it's, it's at least an introduction that could lead to business, okay? So the bottom line is this. You start the game, you serve with a referral. That person that you're playing the game with will then reciprocate with some kind of referral or introduction on a social media platform, hopefully as well. And then you keep doing that back and forth. Give yourself a three day time frame every time until basically we run out of referrals for each other and then the game ends and it's no harm, no foul. It's super fun. It's a game, it's gamifying referrals or introductions, if you want to put it that way. It's a great way to build up this pipeline of great conversations. And especially if you have a scheduler already ready to go, you're gonna have these conversations, it's gonna go right into a phone call, and then you're gonna be able to drop that other person's name. You have context. If you're introduced on a social media platform, here, I'll show you really quick. If you're on LinkedIn, this is literally how you make a LinkedIn introduction, okay? And Wes and others, I, I, you guys are gonna love this. Corey, I know you've been, excited to continue to do more of this too. And uh, Vicky, uh, others who we've been working with quite a bit for, for a long time, Dortha, I, I, I'm just really excited. Um, ben, you and I have been working on LinkedIn for a while. So there's others, I can't even name everybody, but we've been trying to do this as an experiment for a while. And here's what you do. You go into LinkedIn, you click on messaging. If you wanna make an introduction, okay? Click on messaging in the upper menu. Then you click on Compose, which is on the, that, le that little icon on the left side there. Then number three, you, pipe, you type in two people's names that you want to introduce. So in this case, if it was me and um, I'll just pick somebody, Dortha, okay? I would, I, would, uh, I would introduce Dortha to, let's say, Wes, okay? Hey, type in Dortha's name, type in Wes's name, and as long as I'm connected to them on LinkedIn, I can make this introduction. Then I just say something like, hey, um, Dortha, meet Wes. Your name came up in a conversation today. Hope you find this introduction mutually beneficial. Good luck, uh, set up, uh, look, uh, hope you can set up a quick call or just one or two sentences, just letting them know that you thought it would be a good introduction. If you put an at symbol behind their name in LinkedIn, it'll actually tag them so that it's easy to click on to go to their profile and it's easy to track. And by the way, use the term meet in your message so you can go back and, and search them later on. So a little bit of an advanced kind of tracking uh, or at least tracking tips when you're using LinkedIn. I live on LinkedIn, so I just want to share this little tip for you guys as, as members and uh, power partners and those who are working with closely, I just want to let, let you know that LinkedIn introductions 
LinkedIn referrals, uh, LinkedIn connections, uh, connecting people that you think would be good, uh, valuable connections is insanely important for not only your business, but those who you would want to link up with and say, hey, I know we're both in like uh, the marketing space, but I specialize in this. Um, can I help you by introducing you to somebody in your region? <clears throat> like um, Debbie, you and I have been doing this. I've been introducing a bunch of people or, or at least, you know, some people in, in your region so that we can get them on your radio show and do some different things uh, around the Reno area and even uh, parts of Northern California. And then you've been reciprocating by introducing to other people. And so we have this trusted like ping pong game going right now. And gosh, if we can just continue to do that with a handful of people, we'll have so many appointments just from referral introductions, uh, referral and, and, and social media type introductions that I don't know that we're going to need much be, besides this software to stay efficient and then this network to be able to help each other. And you might be asking yourself, well, what if I do some of the same things that they do? Start specializing. <laughs> Don't do everything. Link up with somebody who does it better than you. And then and take, take, take your game to another level and start partnering. Um, I'd, I'd rather do a profit share 50-50 with somebody and have three times as much business than try to do it all myself. Does that make sense? Can I, get, can I get an amen from somebody? Can somebody give me an amen? Because I think this is powerful for us to be able to work together on a whole different level. And I want to make sure that we're hearing it. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's open it up. Let's have some conversation. Um, I'm going to continue the recording. So, I mean, just know that. But you can be totally transparent with your questions. It's 9 o'clock. We've come to the end of our time today, but I want to just, I want to light it up. Corey, do we have any topics or anything that can kind of get the, break the ice here? And um, uh, Most, um, honestly, most of it is just comments on how great things are or answering your questions. Um, Tim, I actually have to go right now. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> People can keep um, asking questions. I got a meeting I got to get to right now. So. Yep, you got it. Talk to you soon. All right, bye hey. everybody. Thank you. So I'm going to bring in the chat box, but I, I want to I do a little roundtable today. We have uh, a good amount of participation today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for setting time to be able to connect and, and make sure that, you know, we're able to have a conversation today. But um, let's, just, let's just go around, the, uh, around the, the table here, if you will. If you're not able to talk because you're driving or something like that, then that's fine. Just don't say anything and we'll mute you. Uh, looks like, uh, Debbie, you have maybe a thought or something to, to kind of break the ice here. You're, you're great okay. at this. So I, appreciate I would love it. to. So first of all, as usual, I learned a ton. And I, I want to give my, my best takeaway, which okay. I'm sure that because we're all givers and we kind of all understand that, I think the most important word of all of this is trust. Come on now. I really feel like trust is so important because in today's world, in the business world, in the networking world, I hate to say this, but sometimes there's more people that are takers. So they see you and they see you have connections and they see your talent and they say, hey, I want to work with you. I want to do this. And then they come in your circle and then they take all your goodies and then they go. And I hate to say that, but it does happen. It's like the person at Costco who walks in and has no intention of buying anything or doing anything meaningful. They just food. they just <laughs> grab all the free free little goodies. And look at the at the end of the day, I'm okay with a little bit of that in the beginning, just to kind of get the conversation started. But at some point, you need to buy something in the warehouse, man. Yeah, like it's but, time to but, go. but for me, it's really more about you have we have a safe space that you could come and yeah. say. I have a question, I have an idea. Who's the best person in this group who can help me with that? So I like that idea and it's already happened with me before where somebody said, hey, are you said, hey, you should talk to Deb. And we had a call for an hour and it was beautiful and we shared and it was all via trust and emotion and being having an amazing heart. So I really think that where you said heart and mind, I really feel like that's what the giver is about. 
So um, I'm just I'm just loving being able to be open and honest. So thank you. Cool. Yeah. Bring bring. Hey, if there's an issue, even though we're you know we're live right now and people are listening to our, if there's an issue or any, we're okay with that. Like this is the this is what people want to see. This is what they want to know is that we're transparent or working through uh, good things, bad, you know, difficult things. And we're walking through this so that everybody can go to another level. And I love your, your positivity, my friend, Ben, do you have anything for us as you're driving or doing or chatting or doing whatever you're doing and listening to this? Um, you know, I've, <clears throat> I've been, uh, you've been helping me connect uh, with, with, uh, you know, a, pretty good number of people lately and I think one of the one of the fun things whether they're in the giver giver network or not um, for me has been kind of making LinkedIn a personal place um, mm -hmm. it, it, I've always I've always been on LinkedIn but I've never I've had you know hundreds if not thousands of connections and I don't know very many of them and I don't know what they do. And, and so, so it's, it's been fun to, you know, do these 10 minute, um, you know, get to know you conversations. And sometimes, sometimes there's, there's not a lot, um, there's, there's not much moving forward that's going to happen, but I can tell you just about everybody that I've talked to when I, when I open the conversation with, you know, all I really want out of this is just to get to know you and know what you do. And if, if there's a good, good connection for it, then great. If there's not, then, you know, I, I'll wish you a wonderful day and, and, you know, I'll keep, keep my eyes open on your posts that come across and it just makes it a very personal place instead of just a cold, you know, uh, I don't know, directory. So um, I, I found that that's been a really effective, effective way. And then there's been some, some good connections that have come out of it. So I, I thank you for that. You got it, man. And it seems like the B2B space, the the warming up process and the trust building process is is a little longer on the on the front end, but then later on the loyalty uh, for those particular clients because you built it properly. I was just on the phone call with somebody yesterday that um, was thinking about using LinkedIn to basically how should I put this nicely? Oh, I'm just gonna say it. Um, basically. Um, spam everybody on their LinkedIn profile to see if we can get them into some kind of funnel. And um, I, it's not necessarily the worst um, short term idea in the world. If you got, you know, 10,000 plus, you know, connections on LinkedIn or something or on another social media platform for that matter. But in the B2B space, we want to start conversations. So I'd rather have conversation with you know, a hundred people who are actually willing to book an appointment and have, a, you know, have a meaningful exchange and then maybe 10, 20 or 30 of those become clients later. To me, that's a win. So I, I'm with you, Ben. I, 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 I like the kind of the relational approach. And that's what, that's a lot of why we, we reference Bob Berg as well, because he's the, the relational sales and marketing guy, right? Well, good. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Carl, do you have anything for us? I know you're kind of just jumping in after some, some great conversations here recently. Uh, Carl Reed, do you have anything for us today? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just listening. Just listening in. All right, man. I, I love the fact you got your drone flying around everywhere and taking videos, real estate videos. And uh, if you guys want to pop in what you're, you know, like, like we said earlier, what you're doing, like what your genius is, in the um, in the chat box, feel free to just start spamming each other right now. <laughs> just let people know what you're doing, what your one thing is that you're doing. Uh, I know Ben has the RSVP uh, decks that are mailed to high end uh, high end homeowners in uh, multiple regions. Um, he's got connections all over the country as well. So, uh, Charlie, uh, welcome, 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 man. You've been doing some good work. You even did some great work on this slide deck, brother. Give me give me some feedback. Um, I do want to thank you personally, uh, Charlie, for, for working uh, on the slide deck and doing some, some, some great graphic design and some other. Yeah. Things. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, no, I'm just, uh, just here to just listen and learn what everybody cool. does. And I'm happy to be a part of the team. Great. Well, anybody who wants to get some help with graphic design and uh, just, just a real talent, um, loving, loving the, 
the one pagers and just the different things you're doing, yeah, Charlie, uh, you, you want to definitely uh, reach out to Charlie. Okay. So good. Uh, Roxanne, give me, give me a heads up on uh, what you thought about this internal look at what we're doing uh, as a network. Roxanne, do you have anything that you'd like to add to the conversation or are you just listening? I'm not sure if you're hearing me. Are you hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you. A little bit noisy, but but give me what you got. Um, really, I was just listening, you know, trying to learn as much as I can. Good. Good, good, good. I'm glad I'm glad you're here and look forward to continued conversations and uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. V Vicky, Vicky, how tell are you are you able to are you in the middle of some are you able to talk? Okay, I just got here. Good. So good. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I see you got your rotary badge on. You're all excited. Visibility, Vicky, everybody. Come on, a round of applause. Excellent. So, uh, Vicky, you're, you're, you're always, always on point when it comes to certain things, you know, visibility and some different things. But, and you're always here to add some good feedback. But do you have anything particular about maybe even uh, referral ping pong or some other little new new tips that we've we've been discussing yeah the referral ping pong is amazing um i mean I, it's kind of like we do that but when you put it in the context of like the three-day thing it's like okay now we're on a game <laughs> and personally i love ping pong i mean anybody ever wants to play ping pong i am in okay but referral ping pong i think i'm going to try that um so that's exciting the scheduling i mean the linkedin software i'm super excited to hear about that um, and I can't believe the cross section of people on the um, on the call right now. It's 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 really really exciting. I can't. It's what a great resource just right here. It's really cool. You got it. And um, we're going to be continuing to update pages, so you guys will have access to each other's information very easily, quickly. You're welcome to blow up the the Facebook uh, message. You know the group messaging that we've been doing as we continue to develop within our private groups and you will be invited based on based on your activity and your trust level within the network. We, we, we're just hand selecting the people that we really want to work with. We really want to make sure that the membership is something that's valuable to you. And um, some of you have been paying for, for, for years. Some of you are brand new. Some have been paying at, uh, you know, uh, for different time periods. Some of you have been participating at, at, at high levels. Some of you are offering software as, as, as a part of, of, of how you're participating in your membership. So I just want to let you know that we're very flexible in how we welcome members, but we're very selective on who we welcome. Does that make sense? Cool. Good, good, good. Well, awesome. We're running against the clock, ladies and gentlemen. Feel free to blow up the chat box for a couple more minutes. I'll keep it kind of going as we uh, stop the recording. And I'm actually going to stop the recording just in case somebody has uh, any other um, comments. Give me one second. I just want to make sure. Good. We're not doing that. Pause the recording.